Welcome everyone. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good morning or good evening as well if you're coming from other time zones. Welcome to today's webinar on a closing conversation with Serbia and reflections on its CIVIT project. Today we're going to be having a conversation with the CIVIT Serbia project team as well as country representatives and we're going to deep dive into the project's outcomes, challenges and success stories. We're very happy to welcome you to our first event in this series of closing conversations with CBIT projects that are have either have finished uh, not so long ago or are about to conclude. We will be soon sharing a little bit more information, so stay tuned in our social media and in the CBIT Global Coordination Platform for future events in the coming months. Before we start today's conversation, I would like to give a brief overview of the CBIT GSP project and the CBIT uh, project for those of you who may not be familiar with the activities. First of all, about this webinar. This webinar was organized by the CBIT GSP project, which is a long name that stands for the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparently, Transparency Global Support Program. It is part of a series of webinars, as I just mentioned, with other national CBIT projects that have concluded or are about to conclude, and it has three main objectives to give an opportunity to national civic projects to reflect on their progress, to provide an outlook on the next transparency steps in different countries, and to share knowledge and lessons learned with other transparency practitioners. To give you a little bit of an overview about the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency, or the CIVET, this was established through a decision at COP21, and is administered and funded by the GEF. It supports developing countries in enhancing the ETF requirements as defined in Article 13 of the Paris Agreement. And as you can see, it has a big project portfolio of 88 countries in uh, 88 projects. Sorry, in, oh, sorry we have some of uh, if you could mute your microphones, please, as a as a house housekeeping rule, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, 88 projects as um, in over 86 countries. And um, the scope difference between 82 different country projects, uh, one regional project, and five global projects, including this CBIT GSP. As you can see in this graph, the, the geographical spread is mostly in Africa, Latin America, and in Asia. But as you're going to see today, we also have projects in Europe and Central Asia, as well as regional and global projects. So, a little bit more about the CBIT GSP, this global CBIT GSP project. It was also funded by the GEF and it's implemented by UNEP and executed by the UNEP Copenhagen Climate Center. The project started last year around April 22 and it will end in the end of 2026 with around 9 million uh, US dollars of budget. We deliver on uh, four main objectives, which are to support the transition of countries to the BTRs and assist countries to submit their, their NCs and their last BURs also to provide a one-stop shop for transparency and to mainstream gender considerations. And we deliver on these four objectives through our main mediums of, of, of support, which are the regional transparency networks, direct support to countries in prioritized areas, trainings and activities, regional and global workshops such as these ones, etc. Currently, the CBIT GSP project is uh, working on developing an integrated platform uh, which we will launch during the SB sessions in Bonn this year. The platform will have four main objectives, which is to give up-to-date information about all transparency projects, country country reports, knowledge products, etc. To give up-to-date information on events, webinars, and all things related to climate transparency. To provide a place for peer-to-peer -peer exchange on climate transparency issues driven by the transparency networks and to serve as a one-stop shop for all countries to request support in terms of transparency. And the main features of the platform will, will include uh, country pages, project pages, agency information, a dedicated space and forum for regional transparency networks, etc. So with this uh, little um, overview of the CBIT project, by the way, this is the, the global project team that we have here in Copenhagen currently, so you're more than welcome to get in touch with us. We have uh, Susanna Conrad, Fatima Zarataibi, and myself, Alejandro Regatero Labadia. Um, so 
please get in touch with us. We're, our emails are, we're all, you're always welcome to write, with us, to write to us, talk with us, etc. With this uh, brief overview of the CBIT project, I want to kickstart the conversation with uh, the CBIT Serbia team. Today, we're very, very happy to have with us today Ms. Dragana Radulovic, the head of climate change division in Serbia, Mr. Miroslav Tadic, program analyst for the climate change and environment in UNDP Serbia, and Ms. Esther Baric, portfolio oversight specialist at the climate data and transparency in UNDP. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Thank you for the three of you. Welcome. Please, uh, you can uh, uh, put your cameras on and um, Today, we will start with an overview of the CIVIT, Pro CIVIT Serbia project with Miroslav, followed by a reflection by uh, Serbia, uh, by Dragana on the Serbia project, and some rapid fire questions, and a regional perspective of the UNDP by Esther. So, Miroslav, let's start with you. Welcome, and, and thank you very much for your time today. I would like to start with you with an overview of the Serbia project. So, um, what were the main the main priorities of the project? What were the main national needs that needed to be addressed? So, Miroslav, the the floor is is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Alexandro. Thank you very much for inviting us and for giving us this uh, great opportunity, of course, to. Uh, present the achievements and results uh, uh, achieved through the um, CBIT project in Serbia. And it is also my great pleasure that we have today with us uh, representatives of the government of Serbia, Ministry of Environment, Nidragana Radulovic, who is actually um, uh, one of the key people uh, dealing with climate change in Serbia and also UNFCCC uh, focal points. So, um, I will just uh, really technically inform you about the process and of course I will leave it up to Dragana to uh, tell uh, more about the impressions of the government and also the way forward with the results. When it comes to some key, let's say, priorities uh, uh, of the project or some general overview, I would say that there are three main priorities that this project actually tackled and uh, achieved results within these three, three priority areas. The first one is of course that it strengthened different uh, um, mechanisms, developed methodologies and tools to support the government of Serbia actually to meet the uh, transparency requirements of the Paris Climate Agreement presented in Article 13. The second one would be that basically we created uh, we supported the government uh, in the first steps in implementation of the new uh, legislation in climate change area, which is actually the new law on climate change, uh, very much aligned also with the EU uh, climate uh, climate a key, um, especially in terms of establishment of the uh, monitoring, reporting and verification system for uh, better tracking and better collection and uh, availability of the climate related data and information. Uh, but more than that, of course, this, this MRV system uh, helped the country to uh, start better planning the, the uh, strategic framework of relevance to climate change and the reports uh, to the EU, to the U UN, as well as, of course, um, uh, development and improvements of the national determined contribution. And the last point would be actually that the system, uh, that the whole project contributed to strengthening the cross-sectorial collaboration, which is, I think, very much needed if we want to achieve better transparency and involvement of, of other um, relevant stakeholders, not only the, the, the central government level, but of course the local self-governments, the businesses, academia, uh, and of course the civil society. So um, yeah, this is this. I would say these are these are some let's say major major um, uh, priorities the project uh, touched upon. Um, but when when we talk about uh, the, the the also the one of the important things is that actually the project uh, uh, was not implemented uh, as a standalone initiative. It was done really in synergy with many other similar actions in Serbia, including the processes of uh, reporting, supporting the reporting towards the UNFCCC, development of national communication, biennial update reports, the national adaptation plan funded through the Green uh, uh, Climate Fund, as well as uh, some uh, other projects such as the, the Jet funded Climate Smart uh, Urban Development Project, which supported actually involvement and inclusion of the local self-governments in the overall monitoring and reporting and uh, system on climate information and data. 
Mm -hmm. I see. And 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 how has the project designed and what are the activities uh, that, that have been implemented in the project based on these uh, uh, priorities and needs that you mentioned and also in collaboration with all of these other initiatives? Yes. Well, uh, when it comes to, to the priorities, of course, that I think together with these projects, basically the, the, the project really enabled implementation of the legislation on climate change, the new law on climate change. But also it helped significantly the country to further uh, comply with the EU acquis on climate. Um, and the more than that, I think what is important is that uh, one of the major achievements is actually supporting the revision and the improvement of the national determined contribution and increasing the country's ambition. Uh, this was done in synergy, for example, directly with the GCF funded uh, national adaptation program, which uh, digged deeper into the adaptation component, while the CBIT project focused more on elaborating uh, the uh, mitigation related elements of the of the NDC, of Serbia's NDC. And eventually we got to the NDC, which is uh, significantly with significantly increased climate ambition for Serbia, which is 33.3 percent uh, of GHG emission reduction by 2030 compared to 19. 90 levels, which is actually three times more higher ambition actually for Serbia compared to the INDC to the initial national contribution. And when it comes to uh, local level, what we did through this project, we supported also capacity building, not only on central level, but also at the level of local self-governments. And we did it together in synergy with this uh, Climate Smart project, basically where we uh, enabled different tools for the local self-governments on how they could better collect the climate-related information and data from different sectors, such as waste, transport, energy, agriculture, and then report it through the system towards the national monitoring, reporting, and verification system. Uh, we conducted in parallel uh, a lot of capacity building events, which helped uh, in better understanding of the local self-governments, for example, how they are, why they are important, how much they are important in terms of provision of these data for the government so that they can further uh, uh, make informed the decisions concerning the national policies and legislation, but also to prepare better quality reports. I think that these are some of the of the most uh, important elements and priorities uh, that that project achieved. Uh, of course, it goes without saying that uh, improvement of the national greenhouse gas inventory was also something that worked uh, closely through the CBIT project. Uh, we used it to the maximum extent. We can uh, maybe later mention a couple of uh, additional um, studies and assessments and analysis we've been able to do through the CBIT project, but. Uh, we definitely corrected the data when it comes to the Afolo sector in the greenhouse gas inventory by, for example, calculating better the organic carbon in soil. Um, also, the national uh, CO2 lignite emission factor was developed for Serbia. Uh, we assessed also the contribution of the, for example, um, short-lived climate pollutants, uh, which uh, have not been done before for Serbia and how much this additional effort could contribute to increasing Serbia's climate ambition. We did some assessment of the just transition possibilities, uh, um, uh, also nature-based solutions and their role in, in uh, increasing climate ambition in terms of the climate, both climate adaptation and mitigation to, to increase the carbon uh, sinks and so on and so forth. So this, this, this was a really amazing project which enabled us really uh, to tackle different dimensions of the transparency framework, not only on, on transparency of the data, but also improving the quality and availability of the climate related data and information. I see. I was going to say that it is an ambitious project and you have been able to touch on 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 many different uh, um, aspects of it in the institutional arrangements, capacity building, quality of data like you were mentioning. Uh, can you expand a little bit more on on the outcomes then and the, the success stories of the project. I see here you're you're sharing the domestic MRB system. Maybe you want to to tell us a little bit about the about this tool. Yes, indeed, this uh, is um, um, a kind of uh, platform uh, developed, the IT tool. But more than that, uh, I think that the whole process around it, it was more important than the platform itself, I would say, because it was a, a kind of learning by doing for for the, 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 the for the relevant competent institutions and other stakeholders on how 
to mm-hmm. provide better information and data and how to manage them and how to use them for um, you know different purposes. So uh, the MRV system has the six uh, uh, modules that we developed uh, on the greenhouse gas inventory, on projections and scenarios, on policies and measures related to mitigation, on uh, climate adaptation, climate finance and NDC module. Uh, so I don't know if you could put on the slides, but just for the illustration how the system looks like, I mean, there is an online version which we can share, of course, with the participants and they can explore it and see how it looks like mm-hmm. uh, in practice. But in parallel, while, while constructing the modules, we uh, developed the different methodologies and tools for the line institutions and how, uh, how what, what, are, what are their roles in the system, how they should provide it, what type of data, what type of information, how they should provide it, you know, and also uh, for the line Ministry of Environment, which is the main, let's say, um, administrator of the whole NMRV system for climate, how to be, to perform this ad, uh, administrator function, because this is also very much important um, as for each of the specific subsectors uh, uh, of relevance to climate, a follow, you know, waste sector industry or uh, energy and so on and so forth. Uh, different institutions are in charge and, uh, you know, the system envisages their active role, their coordination role for particular sectors. Uh, um, they do the qual- initial quality control, quality uh, check of the information and data, and then we have the overall system uh, controlled by the um, uh, main administrator, which is Ministry of Environment, actually Dragan, I would say, as, as a unit triple C focal point, which filters the information and then it's all being stored in the system in different uh, modules and then the purpose of the system is to use this data and information for really I would say four main purposes uh, uh, one is the for the for the improved uh, and informed policy making the other one is for uh, the reporting purposes uh, not only to the unit triple c but other other important reportings in, including for the eu um, process and also uh, for for making these uh, data and information available for general public for different purposes for example for the business sector so that they can uh, also do the informed business planning processes and eventually of course to improve the quality of the data in the greenhouse gas inventory, which is, I would say, the basis for for any any policy making. So this is how the the system looks like. I mean, um, uh, in in principle, and and uh, it's it's as I say available on the online version, which uh, is administrated by by the uh, competent ministry, which is Ministry of Environment. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Miroslav. Yes, uh, um, as, as you say, it would be great to to see it, and we have it. Uh, um online version i think you also touch on a very important uh, uh, topic which is the learning by doing right and to and to coordinate with all the different stakeholders from data providers to uh, greenhouse gas inventory team to ultimately managers of, of the tool that is uh, uh, there is no there is no one size fits all and it really depends on the national context and and how the stakeholders understand the tool and use the tool ultimately Maybe we can touch upon upon this a little bit uh, more with the uh, Dragana on on the lessons learned. Um, I want to thank you again, Miroslav, for your time. Thank you so much. And uh, any, if you have any questions right now for Miroslav, we can take them uh, later on for the Q and A or write them in the uh, in the chat, and we will be happy to to answer um, after this uh, after these conversations. So. Um, now I want to continue with uh, with Dragana. Welcome, Dragana. Um, well, you have heard me right now talking, for example, about the about the lessons learned, and I want to hear your insights on what have been the lessons learned from the project on on from your perspective of of, of Serbia Serbia country representative, uh, both in terms of implementation and and also technically. And um, are there any things that the country would do differently in hindsight or learning learning by doing with the different stakeholders, etc. So um, happy to hear. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Alejandro, and also thank you, Miroslav, for giving quite an extensive uh, presentation and uh, really uh, uh, <coughs> taking a picture of our uh, CIBIT, uh, let's say, uh, efforts that we took. Um, first of all, I would like to say hello to everyone and thank you for um, uh, taking the time today to uh, really hear about our, let's say, pioneering uh, uh, experience in uh, this enhanced transparency framework uh, issue. 
I have to admit, uh, uh, I'm still a little bit baffled by the entire um, article of the Paris Agreement, you know, and uh, when we started with this project, it was really an uncharted territory that we, um, let's say, you know, dwelled upon. And um, what we really uh, learned is a lot, and uh, I would just ask Alejandro to maybe a little bit yeah. later put on the slide where we have the follow-up actions, or maybe uh, even now. Um, Surely. On the on the presentation, and uh, uh, just before we start, um, I would like to say that uh, uh, the um, um, slide on lessons learned is not included in this version of the um, presentation, but I will um, revise it and uh, send it to Alejandro and Susanna, and then it will be shared with you as well. So, uh, what uh, Alejandro and Miroslav um, briefly touched upon was this national context that needs to be put in place uh, before really, um, you know, um, putting into perspective where you are with CIBIT. So in Serbia, we already had this um, digitalization trend going and efforts taken by the government to really digitalize uh, uh, the, most of its administrative procedures and everything. And this is why we took this approach and it was really innovative. And we're really proud to have this MRV IT system that Miroslav uh, very kindly introduced. So, um, However, uh, beside this, uh, uh, we also uh, took the CIBIT project as an opportunity to fulfill not only obligations towards the Article 13 of the Paris Agreement by uh, establishing this MRV system, not only uh, in its IT or, let's say, uh, implementation uh, part, but also uh, on the entire uh, uh, modalities, procedures, and guidelines side of it as well. Uh, and uh, uh, on the other uh, side, on the other hand, there is the issue of fulfilling obligations towards the Paris Agreement in the sense of NDC revision. And in this purpose, the CIVIT project really helped us. And this is one lesson that we learned is that uh, we really utilized it to build upon the material and the tissue that we already had in, uh, in this uh, sense of our NDC being revised previous to the CIBIT project. So not just not to get things mixed up, I believe that the CIBIT, and we will most likely you know, decide how to use it in the next phase, but it can uh, uh, of course be used as a tool to revise your NDC. And then later on when the system is established fully, it will you know, do itself a purpose. But on the lessons learned, just very quickly, there are several. And first of all, as Miroslav said, and as you can you could see from the presentation, is that this um, uh, uh, CIBIT system and CIBIT platform and enhanced transparency framework is a very multi-sectoral and uh, uh, multi, let's say, stakeholder endeavor. And in order for you to, I, I believe everyone has this uh, experience, in order for you to communicate to the UNFCCC on, you know, what's going on in your country, you really need to get data from a lot of different stakeholders. And this is why it's very important to include them all in the beginning from the initial phases, you know, to build up certain working groups or, uh, you know, task forces, whatever it is in your country and relevant to your framework to really um, spread the word on the, uh, the idea that, you know, you maybe deal with some sector in your country, but, you know, you're not aware that it's climate affecting the climate or climate affected. And therefore, you need to, you know, provide some raw data that we can then use to, you know, really shape up the picture of, you know, uh, 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 mitigation and adaptation efforts in, in our country and then, you know, submit it to the UNFCCC in, in a framework that is acceptable to the Paris Agreement, that is transparent, you know, and every, including all the principles that uh, are, you know, embedded in the UNFCCC uh, treaty and everything. So, uh, <clears throat> basically, what th this stakeholder intervention will do, it will lead to certain, you know, uh, institution, main institutional stakeholders to get crystallized and roles to get crystallized more. And then you can really, you know, chart who's doing what and who will be responsible for what. So in case of Serbia, this, this was all previously done, but then it was built upon by the CIBIT projects and the efforts that were taking, uh, taken under the CIBIT project. And then it was um, also used to shape up the legal framework uh, with regards to <clears throat> 
mainly uh, issues of uh, reporting on our GAG emissions, uh, policies and measures and uh, projection. And uh, we are an EU candidate country. And in our case, which is probably not the case for all of today's participants, but we um, have the obligation to align our national legislations uh, to the one uh, of the EU. And in this case, uh, there is a so-called governance regulation that basically governs uh, reporting of the EU to the UNFCCC. And uh, <clears throat> we must align with it as well as, you know, find a middle ground between this and the UNFCCC and Paris Agreement uh, obligations. And this is just uh, uh, what the, let's say, structural side of the UNF, of this uh, CIBIT uh, effort. And uh, what really is a lesson uh, that is, uh, at least for me, is this this is not a one-stop shop for uh, exercise for, you know, that you do, you have a project that lasts several years and then you have results delivered and we have this and that's it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Miroslav said I was an administrator to this CIBIT platform. To be quite honest with you, I'm not certain how to use it. I know where it is, you know, it's on our server and everything, but there's still a lot of work to be done and a lot of capacity building to be undertaken in order for uh, not only the administrator, but all of the relevant uh, uh, stakeholders that will have roles in this collection of, of data and reporting to us uh, that will have, um, you know, certain obligations, they need to be prepared. And this is where we come to our follow-up activities and actions. And uh, I will start with the second one, which is actually the phase two of the CIBIT, which we are, let's say, uh, um, deliver, uh, deliberating on. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, um, this is something that... Uh, can be really used to, um, you know, build upon results that we've achieved through CIBIT-1 and then, you know, have the next phase focused on the implementation and uh, focused on really putting into uh, uh, force and into work what we've developed. Because it's, you know, we have a lot of projects where uh, you get a study, you get something, uh, and then it ends up in a drawer and you never use it again. And we really uh, see this IT tool as a crown jewel, let's say, of our project, which will help us um, ease this process of data collection. You know, you know rather than having this uh, network of contacts delivering you data through email and mm -hmm. Excel sheets and uh, Word documents and then copy pasting. Is this the next, is this the final version, not the final? You know, we want to have everything in place in, in, uh, in one platform that can be used by multiple uh, <clears throat> players. Mm -hmm. And so uh, institutional players that are also embedded into national law. So this is how we see the system and this is how uh, what we learned so far during the uh, running phase of the CIBIT project. And of course, uh, we plan to uh, develop our biannual transparency report and our fourth national communication. Uh, we are also um, looking forward to... Uh, uh, using what we've done through CIBIT to, uh, folk, uh, you know, to utilize it in this uh, process as well. So I hope this painted the picture of, of, um, of CIBIT from the perspective of a national uh, counterpart. So thank you. It does. Thank you, Dragana. I, I was going to say that it seems like you are uh, you have quite busy months ahead of you with the next uh, nat national communications, the BTR, and hopefully the CBIT project and this MRB tool will will help uh, inform all the data that's ne that's needed for the for these updates. And I also think that this kind of uh, of um, knowledge sharing webinar that we do is uh, touches on some of the most important that are these intangibles right uh, this uh, stakeholder coordination the legal framework how much time actually does take to to do all of these processes so it is really good to see experiences from country to country in this case with with your experience in serbia because it will inform other countries uh, around the world on on what works what doesn't work what works in serbia may not work in in other countries and 
and vice exactly. versa. And just seeing the experiences, I think is very valuable. So thank you. Many thanks again, Dragana. And it is great to hear that Serbia is continuing on their strengthening of the MRB. Uh, from our side, I can say that we're happy to support all along the way. And uh, uh, before we, we, we finish with this part, I wanted to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions about the CBIT project and about transparency in general. So this is supposed to be some sort of a, of game or palate cleanser. So there is no preparation needed for this. You just have to tell us the first thing that comes to your mind when when you hear these questions. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. OK, so first, do you say CBIT or CBIT? Well, I say CBIT because you, you heard me already, so <laughs> I think it's CBIT for us, yeah. yeah. I say CBIT. <laughs> there you go, we have the Many two. Really? <laughs> okay, okay, that's good to know. I always say CBIT. More than CBIT. <laughs> but yeah. it depends on the situation, I guess. I say CBIT myself, but I've heard that I have all of it. Second question is, how, for how long have you worked within climate transparency? Miroslav, please, you know the dates. For how long on the transparency? Oh, mm -hmm. I would say five, six years, six years now already. Five, you know, five years. Yep, I would say Great. yeah. And did you participate in negotiating the ETF? Um, oh well, I can <laughs> say that <laughs> because I'm a focal point. Well, Serbia does not, unfortunately, have capacities to um, uh, participate in negotiations. You know, in in that way. But we, of course, uh, uh, adopted and uh, how what is the the word? Uh, um, uh, we are we agreed with the uh, decisions. Yeah, with decisions under the COP. Yeah, on the enhanced society framework. So yeah, adopted. Yeah. Okay. Have you been part of preparing an NC, BUR, or BTR? I think I know the answer to this one. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Miroslav uh, yes. is here, yes, as a UNDP yes, yes, counterpart. Always. We are a long time. <laughs> Following the government. You're well acquainted, yes. <laughs> Do you prefer the term transparency or MRV? I like MRV better because it uh, also associates me it's more wide you know be, it, it has more uh, uh but transparency of course important so yeah, i'll stick with mrv say, yeah exactly mrv is more technical and uh, more uh down to the essence but yeah transparency would be a broader nice term principle, which yes. might include many other aspects yeah i was going to agree with with miroslav depending on the crowd i would say one or one or the other what comes to your mind when thinking of btr and etf challenge <laughs> more data be more better data <laughs> yeah. i think challenge is a common one i would say yeah long process and the last question what is serbia's biggest priority for transparency right now I would say that we get the system running and ensure that we have a data flow and all of the uh, data um, fed into the system, this MRV IT tool that we developed at this point in the transparency arena. In other sectors, it's something that else. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More uh, focused, maybe more involvement of the corporate private sector and, you know, dealing with the uh, non, those uh, high emitting yeah. industries non-stakeholder yeah non-stakeholders yes it sounds like a small task right <laughs> well thank you so much both of you dragana miroslav thank you so much also for letting us uh, try this with you because you're the first ones letting us put you on the spot for these rapid fire questions and for your your availability and your willingness to participate in this. So thank you so much. For the next part of our webinar, I would like to invite Esther now into uh, the conversation and to put on your camera. Welcome, Esther. Uh, thank you so much, Alejandro. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues, for organizing this uh, webinar. And thank you for our colleagues from Serbia for uh, participating in it. Um, my name is Esther Boric and I'm working at UNDP uh, supporting uh, CBIT national projects and climate change enabling projects uh, supported and funded by the GEF uh, from the regional team of UNDP. 
And in the followings, I will just give you a brief uh, overview and and uh, introduction mm -hmm. on 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 the regional uh, um, perspectives of the national CBIT projects implemented in the Western Balkan. And let me just quickly share my screen. Yeah, no problem, Mister. Well, 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 you well you put the the screen. I just wanted to mention that, that you will give us this uh, this regional UNDP perspective, right? And and what are the some of the lessons learned in implementing transparency projects in in the region, especially the the ones that have been completed so far. As I understand, it is uh, is Serbia and North Macedonia, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So actually, uh, I will give some inputs. Uh, first, I'm going to just give you like a, a brief overview of the projects that are uh, have been implemented or being implemented in the Western Balkan, uh, the um, priorities and similarities, and then I will try to give you a little bit uh, more inputs on the lessons learned so far from this project, which will, of course, echo a little bit those ones that have been presented by Miroslav and Dragana. Uh, previously. Um, so this map shows quickly the total UNDP uh, CB oh, portfolio. Oh, sorry Esther, I, we oh. cannot see the screen yet. Oh, sorry, um, just let me, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Please let me know if it's working now. Now it's working, great. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much. So basically, uh, this is uh, this map shows the whole uh, UNDP uh, CBIT portfolio implementing in all regions, and uh, currently we have uh, so we have been supporting uh, four national CBIT projects in the Western Balkan region, including Serbia, North Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Montenegro. Uh, and uh, Serbia was the first uh, CBIT national project that has been successfully completed last year. Uh, followed by North Macedonia, and uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is also progressing really well with their uh, national CBIT project, and Montenegro CBIT project has just started last year. Okay. Okay, I think I have lost one slide. Um, sorry, let me just... Yeah, no problem. Uh, let me just, sorry for this technicality. Um, I think I have lost one slide on, on the similarities. Yeah, let me try again. Yeah. In the meantime, we are seeing that some of you are already writing questions and have the hand up. So thank you so much. We will, uh, we will uh, address some of these questions after Esther's uh, presentation and we will have some Q&A. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, this project in the Western Balkan have a similar uh, scope and similar objective. Uh, basically, uh, partly, of course, support uh, uh, the uh, readiness of these countries to meet enhanced uh, transparency framework requirements. Uh, but as already uh, mentioned by Dragan and uh, Miroslav, uh, these uh, countries are also EU candidate countries. Uh, so they have obligation to align their domestic legal frameworks uh, with uh, EU legislation, including uh, monitoring and requirement, uh, monitoring and reporting requirements uh, in, related, in relation to their climate change actions. And in terms of their project results, framework uh, objectives and outcomes this project uh, are, uh, are aimed to. Uh, firstly, all of this project uh, are uh, focusing on strengthening institutional arrangements and information exchange to meet the enhanced transparency framework requirements, which including supporting the development of uh, legal frameworks to, to formalize institutional arrangements, but also to uh, establish uh, a sustainable coordination mechanisms, including a wide range of stakeholders, uh, interinstitutional working groups, uh, uh, private sector NGOs, and many, many, many uh, other actors. And enhancing change inventories and MRV system for checking emissions and the progress towards NDC targets. This includes the development of tools, uh, methodologies, indicators for checking of progress of the NDC targets. Uh, in relation to the improving uh, GH inventory, this project are focusing on, for example, development of emission factors 
or improving uh, quality assurance and quality control processes on the GEG inventory data. Uh, most of the projects are also uh, establishing, uh, as Serbia example showed, an online uh, MRV uh, tool or platform to collect and store uh, GEG inventory mitigation and adaptation data, and also just to serve as a coordination platform for all transparency related activities. Uh, and all of these uh, actions are also completed by a strong uh, capacity building, including uh, trainings on um, various subjects on the use of the MRV tools or, or for example, using the 2006 IPCC guidelines mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And while many uh, CBIT projects in our portfolio are focusing mostly on GH inventory and NDC tracking, uh, uh, these projects are usually have also included an adaptation component and supporting enhancing monitoring system for adaptation and the assessment of the climate change impacts. Uh, and lastly, uh, all of the projects have a strong focus on knowledge management and regional peer learning. Mm -hmm. And just to add a little bit, and again, echoing a little bit what has already been said, uh, a couple of lessons learned from this project in the region. Uh, so I said the synergies and complementary with other projects and in initiatives are really uh, essential. Um, many, many uh, other partners, including the EU, providing support to these countries to, to uh, enhance uh, monitoring and reporting uh, processes of environmental and climate change data. But uh, I would just mention these two important ones, the CHEF climate change enabling activities, which are supporting the preparation of na national reports under UNFCCC, and also the GCF supported national adaptation readiness projects, uh, because this project beyond uh, the preparation of reports or supporting adaptation planning, they are of course providing uh, capacity planning activities as, as well on transparency and monitoring adaptation actions. So it's very essential that they are strongly coordinated with the CBIT projects. Um, and uh, uh, fortunately, uh, usually these initiatives and projects are, are managed and coordinated by the same national institution, usually the Ministry of Environmental Energy. But as a good practice, we have from uh, Montenegro. Montenegro uh, uh, has also established one project management unit to, to manage the CBIT project and the Jeff and activity project to fully ensure that uh, the, the new national reports, including BTI preparation, are strongly built on the results of their CBIT project and that they complement each other. The importance of fostering transparent intersectional cooperation uh, has already been uh, uh, emphasized uh, by, by Dragana, uh, but I would also like to add that uh, this uh, resilience, building resilience against the loss of knowledge and institutional memory is also very, very uh, important and essential in this project, as the usually um, Key staff from, from uh, national governments and national ministries are, are responsible uh, for, for, for the transparency and MRV related activities, including the reporting. And unfortunately, high staff turnover are, are still uh, persistent, um, uh, causing uh, challenges uh, moving in moving towards to a sustainable uh, uh, transparency and MRV system. And for this reason, this project are, are focusing on strongly on training uh, capacity buildings and also extending uh, uh, the formal coordination units uh, within the ministry with, with uh, sufficient uh, staff members. And this also leads to this uh, 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 following points that strong support and investment needed from the national institution to operationalize the MRV system, which has been developed or at least improved under this project following the project closure because in many cases it happened in the past with previous Jeff and Abing activity project that all these national reports uh, 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 were done by project by project basis. So once the Jeff fund has been depleted, then again a gap has happened until new funds were coming in in the reporting process. And basically the CBIC project have started to bridge this gap and already supported, for example, uh, uh, the creation of new climate change units within the ministries which could hopefully also support like a more sustainable and permanent structure uh, for future transparency and reporting activities. 
It is also very important that all of these projects have started to focus on uh, operationalizing, formalizing and harmonizing legal frameworks for transparency, including for data collection management, quality control and archiving. Uh, this includes usually uh, like the supporting the adoption of an overaging climate change law and then supporting the development of specific bylaws, uh, which will also uh, define clear roles and responsibilities of each institution in the, in the reporting and transparency process, including the change inventory preparation. I think it is also important to mention that uh, uh, this project are not necessarily just uh, supporting uh, our creation of a standard on MRV tool, but in many cases they are integrating uh, uh, the climate MRV or MNE tools and platform into existing environmental information systems, which are sometimes supported by the EU. There is a good example in Bosnia and Herzegovina for this. And uh, I, I also would like to emphasize the importance of the inclusion of local governments in the reporting of climate related data, uh, which is also a very good lessons learned uh, example from Serbia already outlined that uh, local climate smart IT system have been uh, developed and are being linked into the national energy platform, enabling that uh, climate data from the local governments uh, level are feed into the national uh, MRV and reporting system. Uh, the gender integration are also a, a strongly focused area in all of this project. Uh, Serbia has developed a gender sensitive monitoring framework identifying key dimension indicators uh, and guidelines uh, for mainstreaming gender in the national climate policy and reporting processes, but all other projects uh, are closely working with uh, uh, ministries uh, responsible for gender issues and other gender groups to ensure that uh, uh, the gender disagreed the gender disaggregated data in the national uh, uh, reporting process are more prevalent and widely used in the future. And just the technical uh, lessons learned I would like to raise because I think uh, it has it has uh, provided a good good support in finalizing the Serbia project successfully. It's actually the completion of a midterm review. Uh, this draft medium sized project uh, are not uh, 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 they are not subject of midterm review. Meter, mm -hmm. Conducting midterm review is optional for this project, but Serbia has decided voluntarily to conduct a midterm review during. Uh, during halfway of the project, just to get a stock day of, of, of what has been achieved and how to make the remaining time better and more productive to ensure that indeed the project is going to achieve its ultimate objective. And the midterm review was conducted by uh, external, terminal, uh, external independent evaluators uh, and they provided really good uh, uh, recommendations and uh, suggestions, including a, a uh, minor revisions in the project results frameworks and indicators, ensuring that by the end of the project, more tangible uh, outputs and outcomes can be achieved. I was and lastly, say, just, um, that, that, that sounds like a very good practice. Sorry for cutting you. Yes, uh, we have also started to 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 raise this uh, 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 the possibility of midterm review for other other uh, stupid projects because because it's not compulsory. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's overlooked. But actually, it it can be uh, can be served as a good tool to to just improve uh, the project. Uh, and just lastly, I would also like to mention specifically for this region the role of regional exchanges in peer learning because there is a strong interest from all countries uh, in exchanging uh, uh, experiences uh, and and results of of uh, national CBIT project and just in general transparency related activities. And they have been strongly incorporated in the project results framework and in the project activities of all projects. And without uh, without the completeness, there is just a few uh, um, events that have been taken place in the past um, uh, three to four years, uh, focusing on on uh, on um, regional exchange and peer learning, peer learning in Western Balkan countries which have been uh, initially supported by the previous Global Support Programme for NCNBURs. 
and they have involved uh, 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 big workshops uh, on MRV and ETF uh, involving all um, Western Balkan countries and also other partners from, from the Eastern European region, but there were also specific webinars on bilateral exchanges uh, between uh, Serbia and uh, North Macedonia, for example. And uh, what I think uh, it's also important to mention that because there was a gap between the two GSP program, uh, uh, the, the interest was so strong, I think, from, from, from these countries that actually uh, uh, the CBIT project of Bosnia and Herzegovina has organized a very successful uh, uh, workshop uh, in last December uh, for Western Balkan countries to discuss uh, the climate, object climate objectives, uh, climate plans, next steps to achieve uh, climate neutrality, and also they have touched uh, base upon uh, their CB project as well and their experiences. And just lastly, I would also like to quickly uh, uh, mention those uh, kind of next steps that are uh, really going to define, I think, the next uh, this year and the next year up to December 2024. Uh, which is basically the preparation of the first biennial transparency reports that are due by, by, by this date. And all of uh, the countries that already have uh, completed or have existing uh, CBIT project have started the preparation for this. Uh, Montenegro was the first one who already got funds approved from the GEF to, to prepare their first BTR in combination with their fourth national communication. And this project and the work is already ongoing. Uh, Serbia and uh, Bosnia Herzegovina are closely following uh, and have already prepared and submitted uh, a funding request with the project documentation to the GEF, and they are under approval. And we already received a request from North Macedonia as well. And just quickly mention to you uh, to the synergies and how to make you know this uh, process is more effective. Uh, there is a possibility to, to uh, submit uh, the adaptation communication as a component of the BTRs or the national communications. And now it seems that more and more countries are going to decide and opt to include adaptation communication as a component of the BTR or their combined national communications and BTRs in the Western Balkan countries as well. Uh, and I'm not going to go in more detail, but uh, uh, Dragan has also mentioned that the potential CB2 projects are also under consideration for those countries that have already completed their first CB to address uh, remaining gaps and also to make the transparency processes even, even better and more effective. And uh, thank you so much. I hope I was I managed to remain in time and um, I will also be happy to, to respond to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you so much for the uh, good insight into into what is happening in the region. I also want to give a big kudos to all the Civit Serbia team, all of you uh, uh, present uh, here today. Esther, Miroslav, Dragana, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your availability and your eagerness to collaborate with us uh, and to be part of this first uh, series of, of these webinars. Uh, so thank you so much, all of you. Um, now, these next minutes, we have the Q&A session. Um, so let us start with some of the questions. Diana, I have seen that you have been uh, there with the hand raise. Uh, you were almost uh, from the beginning, one of the first ones. So please go ahead. The floor is yours if you want to unmute yourself. Um, I think that's even better to, to keep this uh, um, relaxed and, and informal. There is no need to, to just uh, write. If you want to unmute your microphones, that's fine. So please go ahead. Diana, we cannot hear you. Maybe your your microphone is muted. Otherwise, I can uh, look for your question here in the chat. Going uh, a bit. Uh, let me just find the question. I have it here, uh, Diana. A question first to Miroslav. Uh, please inform how the data provision to MRB platform is legally regulated. Is it voluntary or mandatory? 
maybe I can take this over from Miroslav, yes, because it's more. Uh, sorry, Miroslav, I would always give the floor to you, but this is more geared towards the I agree, yes. national context. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, <clears throat> thank you, Diana, for the question. Um, this um, the uh, provision of data for the MRV platform, uh, and not just for the MRV platform, but generally for um, for the purpose of the reporting to the UNFCCC, is uh, embedded in the legal framework. So it's prescribed by our law on climate change, uh, which uh, transposes uh, relevant um, uh, legislation of the U. Uh, European Union in the uh, relevant climate legislation. And um, this, um, just to uh, maybe briefly touch upon, uh, will need to be also uh, um, um, the case when MRV system, this IT system is implemented. So the legal framework, the legal framework will have to reflect uh, this IT system in it as well. And um, uh, this uh, CIBIT project was actually an excellent opportunity for us to um, basically gather all the uh, relevant inputs that we will, once you know the time comes, um, feed into the uh, the law on climate change in order to revise it so it fits this new uh, framework. So this is maybe for the uh, for Diana, yeah. So it's it is legally uh, it it is legally uh, regulated, and it's not uh, it will not be voluntary. It will be mandatory. So uh, according to our law on climate change, actually, for example, for the purpose of uh, preparation of the GEG inventory, which is in charge, uh, our Environmental Protection Agency is in charge of it. Um, the um, uh, data holders will have legal obligation to provide data, for example. So the case will be the same for policies and measures and, and the rest of the enhanced transparency framework provisions in line with the modules that we have in the IT tool. So I think that hopefully answers the question. Maybe Miroslav, if you have had something to add, you can please. No, you covered it all. Actually, yes. I mean, the for now, the uh, MRV system we created is 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 uh, not embedded as such in the in the legislation. I mean, the, the IT tool, of course, it's it's an it's a tool. So basically, uh, as Dragana explained, there are legal grounds for it. But uh, the use mm -hmm. of the IT tool for this purpose, this is something we will work on further. Uh, through capacity building, uh, through with the line institutions and other stakeholders, and hopefully this is going to be done also through the CBIT two project. This is where the national context also comes into uh, play, because, uh, for example, in Serbia, the case is such that in order for you to have uh, this type of a system, you know, running, it needs to have a certain legal background. It needs to have a certain technical standards, you know, embedded in the in the set practice already so thank you i hope i hope this uh, answers your question diana uh georgia from from montenegro was asking also to miroslav uh you mentioned supporting local self governments and managed to link their work and inputs to their national mrb um can you tell us a little bit more about this aspect of the project dragana shall i take this one okay yeah, I mean, this is, I, I mentioned, yes, the CBIT project uh, went to the local level as well. We did uh, mainly the capacity building for the local self uh, governments. Uh, in particular, we were using, for example, when we talk about the climate related data, we uh, focused more on adaptation components also for the local self governments through the CBIT project as well as uh, um, in synergy with the NAP where we um, basically, uh, for example, supported even development of the local adaptation plans for a couple of municipalities as pilots, um, explaining the relevance and the importance of, you know, uh, timely uh, getting involved into the climate adaptation planning uh, for different sectors at municipal level as well, uh, and why this is also relevant for their infrastructure development, for their future projects, and so on and so forth. Uh, but also with uh, a synergy with another Jeff funded project, the Climate Smart Urban Development. Basically, we developed one IT tool again for the local self governments, and um, we called it the Climate Smart uh, Information System. Basically, because 
the purpose of the system, uh, we used more pilot municipalities. I think it was around 15 or 16 of those uh, through which we uh, help them to um, generate and um, compile the data from a sectorial level of relevance to climate uh, change mitigation, in particular from um, energy consumption, uh, waste, um, uh, agriculture, uh, transport, public transport, public lightning, so those kind of data and information. And then uh, we were basically calculating out also the carbon footprint in these sectors. And uh, then they could play around with those data, do the kind of a modeling uh, of, you know, if they would invest more in some of the renewables, for example, or if they would invest more in uh, sustainable modalities of transport or uh, sustainable urban planning, uh, transport planning, you know, how, you know, they could um, um, reduce the consumption, reduce the costs and improve um, and reduce the emissions for, from those particular sectors. And they can use this data for particular purposes for, you know, development of future projects. Uh, I, I mean, we will share the links. There is a link also available for this climate smart information system for municipalities. And the idea is that basically those data, the, the, the MRV system can consume those data from municipalities and then use them for improvement where as relevant because it's going to be administrated by the Ministry of Environment, they will decide which of those data, they will verify them in a way and use them as appropriate, of course, to, to improve uh, the national, let's say, statistics in, in sectorial statistics, uh, because not all of those data would be relevant uh, in terms of, of greenhouse gas emissions and, and, for example, revision of NDCs. So um, this is a process, as I say, we, we created these tools and, and started working with municipalities. It's a demanding task, especially because of, of the lack of capacities at municipal level. I think this is what needs to be pointed out. There are people, for example, energy managers, each municipality has energy manager, but for the environment, then when you go into different other sectors, it's a bit different and difficult because one person covers many aspects. And then, you know, this is a challenging task and, and, and this is learning by doing. We are hand holding them at the moment, but of course it's a process. We will continue with the CBIT project and we'll see how it goes further. Thank you, Miroslav. Thank you. Um, we are seeing that we're receiving a, lo a lot of questions, which is great to see. We will uh, try to respond to as many of those possible here today. Uh, but to be uh, uh, on the interest of time, we will try to keep the questions to to brief questions and brief answers. And whatever we cannot respond to today, we will try to address offline uh, afterwards. So thank you all very much for your questions. We have um, a couple of questions, a bit more on the technical side about the IT tool. Uh, one uh, one question is: uh, Is it cloud based? And the other is uh, if it's uh, currently uh, working. So if you could answer this. Uh... Ragnar, would you like me to? Yeah, it's basically it is. Uh, well, it is. Uh, there is one. Um, now it's the ministry. Actually, it was the e uh, government uh, uh, office of, of the government of Serbia. Now it's it's the ministry for communication, e government, and so on and so forth. And basically, they have a huge uh, storage system, uh, uh, which is the kind of a server for all the all the uh, government uh, available for all the government entities when they create different ty types of IT tools that they want to use. So it is hosted by that particular software of the uh, hardware of the of the IT um, uh, office, a ministry. And uh, of course, the Ministry of Environment is administrator of the system, but it is hosted at the central government server. So, um, yeah, this is how it works. And because of the storage capacity, not all the ministries have sufficient, um, you know, uh, in-house uh, IT capacities for, for this. So that is the reason it's centralized in a way, but still the management uh, of the system is upon the Ministry of Environment. And as Dragan, I indicated, I think uh, when it comes to the usage of the system, I mean, it's being po it's populated with some data and information that we have available, for example, from the reporting processes uh, and DCs. But of course, now it's uh, it is something we will test, I think, for the first for not for the first, but in the continuation with the, the development of the BTR and uh, Fort National Communication, for example. Uh, 
exactly it will to be developed while while yeah, the yeah. remaining projects are happening it's a process mm -hmm, exactly we, we have a couple of uh, open hands here of ra raise hands dr fuad please go ahead you are uh, num number one here you know the hands raised Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be one, one, number one <laughs> among our all colleagues. Uh, my question, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for, for very rich, uh, very, in, in fact, very in, wow. interesting presentation. My, yeah. my question is regarding the uh, MRV system in your country, in Serbia, for example, because uh, right yeah, now we're going to establish mm -hmm. the... Um, yeah. There are some voices here. Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, my question is regarding the uh, MRV system. Is it a centralized or hi hybrid system, or uh, I mean, is it decentralized? Because we have right now uh, a lot of uh, some uh, discussions, uh, dispute among our experts. Is it uh, useful or is it uh, wise to, to create a, a hybrid system or decentralized? Sometimes it's a very big, big challenge. Right now, we are going to create a hybrid system, MRV system, in, in, in order to enhance our activity. Thank you very much. <coughs> Um, thank you for your question. If I understood correctly, by hybrid you mean like partially IT, partially some type of data exchange in hardware? Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I, I will explain that uh, the data, main data, data, data resources. And we have uh, we are going to establish a focal points in a ministerial, in sectoral ministries. For example, they, are, they will be responsible for the, uh, collecting uh, all the, all the, the activity, the relevant sectoral and to provide QAQC um, for initial, uh, and the inventory process will be done by our Minister of Ecology and Natural Resources and represent this ministry. And this is hybrid in our uh, case, and uh, I suppose uh, because a lot of uh, information we have, could not reach out uh, some sources, but our sector minister could do it, and that's why we are we're thinking to create such a way, in such a way, hybrid system in Azerbaijan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, uh, as we mentioned uh, more times, you know, it's very important that you do take into account your national context, you know, because as or it's already been pointed out why, what might work for Serbia does not maybe work for any uh, someone else, you know. And um, uh, whatever, you know, uh, it is that you can utilize that you're, it's already existing and it can be maybe slightly, you know, changed, revised, altered to fit this new obligation and to lessen the impact of new obligations of you know the um, the cost of the entire system the the burden because a lot of people will start having new obligations you know and you don't when you're working for the government you already overworked and you don't want any new obligations and then now someone from this climate uh guys they want some data and you know you really have to work with people and find a way that works best for them and for you and then you really have a something in the end that you know, resembles something that is adequate for the purpose of the ETF. So, okay, thank you very luck, much. You know, er, er, and in any case, good luck. <laughs> and we are here, of course, to share any experience that we have. Yes, really, please share your presentation with, among our participants. Thank you. We will share with uh, with uh, everyone, and we will also post it on the CBIT uh, platform. Thank you, Dr. Fuad. We unfortunately we only have time for one more question. Um, uh, Okoro, do you want to go ahead with uh, with your question, and afterwards we have uh, one last thing before we close today. Okay, thank you very much. Though my question has been partially answered, uh, I was the one that asked about the cloud, whether it's cloud based, and I think uh, the answer has been provided. Uh, however, I want to get more light on uh, the MRV system. Okay, uh, how how do, how do you manage to? Correlate the MRV with the IT system. You get. I don't know that you get my question. My question is this: uh, Your IT system collects data for GAG inventory. Am I correct? Okay. Now, uh, how how? No. How... Sorry. Sorry. Just to interrupt you. Currently, it does. It the idea is that it will be used as a data collection system for 
I think I'm, I'm Miroslav, please jump in and uh, because currently uh, data for the GG inventory is delivered to SEPA in I believe Excel sheets, you know, via email between um, yeah. relevant institutions and SEPA who is the collector of data and uh, who is preparing the GG inventory. I mean, exactly. Now the, the we we actually the the system is populated with the existing data. So the purpose is that we test how and run how this um, system could actually switch uh, replace this uh, Excel mm -hmm. sheet uh, exchange, exchange of information yeah. between the institutions yeah. because it's getting a bit complicated. And then it would be ideal. Ideal case is that it's stored in uh, through the MRV system and then the agency just enters the system and then picks up the data and use them for whatever purpose. It's now complementary to the uh, way how the agency, for example, collects now the data and information from other institutions. Uh, so it's very complementary, um, but we will now have to test it in uh, development of the new reports how the, the functionality of the system in that sense uh, and whether it, it's it's good enough to replace, of course, the existing one. So this is um, this is uh, now and what it builds upon the previous question as well, because I think this is a shared responsibility. So the idea of the MRV system is that other institutions are you know, deeply involved, that they have the responsibility of entering the data to the system while the Ministry of Environment as, as administrator would do a kind of verification so that everybody is responsible for their set of data. Uh, that they are bringing to the system. Thank you, Miroslav, and I hope that answers your question, Okoro. For the remaining questions, we will make sure to answer all of them via email. So we will share all the materials, presentations, recording, and, and questions answered, uh, both via email and through the uh, CBIT Global Coordination Platform. We have one uh, last thing before we close today and before we, before we give some closing remarks. Since this is the first webinar in our series, we would like to improve it uh, as much as possible and make it useful for you, for, for, for the users after all. So we have prepared a quick survey to be responded live through the Mentimeter app. So uh, if it would be a great help if you go to mentimeter.com via your computer or your phone and use the code that is highlighted here on the screen to answer some of the questions that we're going to ask. So please use the code. 4837. I don't have the other two numbers. Sorry, Susanna. 483793. Uh, Susanna will also write it in the in the chat. So if you can connect uh, via uh, this code to Mentimeter, we can start um, some of this uh, quick survey and see what we can improve in the next webinars and what else would you like to see, not necessarily include, what other areas do, would you like to, to, to touch upon? Um, so the first, uh, the first question is from where have you been joining us today? We have here the world map and we can see live people is starting to, to, to answer. We already have some uh, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, South America and Pacific Islands participation. Three people, let's wait a little longer if, uh, if we have other answers. But uh, I have to say that I'm quite surprised that we managed to have this, uh, this uh, global participation. We try to put it at 12 uh, European time to, to give space. So thank you so much to all of you, especially those of you South, in South America and Pacific Islands, you're, you're, you're real troopers. <laughs> we, we see as well uh, 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 Western Africa as well participation. Thank you so much. Yeah, we can go. Regards from Bosnia and Herzegovina, we see in the comments. Thank you. Regards from Copenhagen uh, from, from our side. The second question is, how useful did you find this webinar? Uh, going from uh, very useful, somewhat useful, not sure and uh, not very useful. We can see already some of uh, some questions. Thank you so much for, for all the feedback. I'm glad to hear that so far is on the useful side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please uh, be honest. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
that is great to hear. Uh, we can go on to the to the next question. The next question is: uh, What other areas would you like to see in the next in the next webinar? So please uh, write in the menti. Uh, if you're not in the menti, you can also write it in in the comments. But but please use the menti as much as possible so that we can register all answers in the same in the same software. So we see uh, one of the answers is the gender component of CIVET. This is uh, also something something that we will be touching up touching upon on the next webinars. The type of support provided. Knowledge management. Thank you for your answers. Don't be shy to 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 write uh, anything you would like to see uh, in in the next. Also, think of uh, perspective, country perspectives, and and lessons learned. We have policy support in the ETF, climate finance, communication and awareness, raising practices, capacity to measure greenhouse gas emissions, AFOLU institutional arrangements. Database management, climate finance tagging, reporting and relevant documents, capacity building, loss and damage. Thank you so much for all of your answers. We will, we will, as I said, we will make sure to collect all of these ones and and target some of these topics in the next uh, in the next webinars to come. Another question is: What aspect of the webinar would you like to improve next time? So. Is it any? Is there any part of the of the webinar that we didn't touch upon enough, or you would like to expand, or or, or everything is good and we just should we should keep this format for the next time? Um, do you want some more information about CBIT country projects or CBIT GSP? Uh, maybe other Jeff enabling activities. Expand the Q and A portion. This is always this is very good to hear actually because it means that the that there is a lot of participation from the from the audience. So thank you all so much. It's one of the most active audiences that we have worked with, I can say. Yeah, Q&A. <laughs> I, I, I see that this is the main, the main, uh, the main uh, um, request. More interaction as well uh, in, in, in these uh, conversations. Uh, technical details and examples. That's great to hear. Maybe we will need to expand over over the hour for next time. <laughs> and that is the, this is the the last question. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for answering our questions. I want to give one last opportunity to the Ser Civit Serbia team to give uh, some some final remarks. Um, so please put uh, back your cameras and if you have uh, yeah any any last remarks any. Uh, yes, well, thank you, uh, Alejandro. Thank you, everyone, for uh, excellent questions and for the opportunity to uh, really share our experience. I hope you find it useful. And um, thank you so much. Once again, I have a nice day or evening, wherever you are. And good luck with CBIT and ETF. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can help as much as we can. So thank you, Dragana. Out. I'm happy to see that this is a good community and that we're all connected and interested interested in, in each all each of others' progress and projects. From our side, I also really want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you to the CBIT Serbia team, all everyone participating from all over the world. Um we're really grateful for for your availability and for your interest in this webinar series and repeat that this is just the first webinar of these closing conversations. So stay tuned for more events in our social media and in the CBIT Global Coordination Platform. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.